In Simca 17, we have added new functionality mainly for spectroscopy analysis, and those features are covered in other videos. And though even though some spectroscopy related features will be mentioned in this video, the focus here will be on a selection of the many smaller but still important additions that will improve the overall experience of Simca. Let's start already at the installation of Simca, which now gives you the option to install some of our SIM APIs. The SIM APIs are connectors to various common databases. So if you're working with process data analysis, you may want to consider installing the SIM API that matches your process database already when you install the Simca software. Next stop in this video is the import, which is the beginning of all projects. We've extended our multi-file import to also include text-based files like CSV, TXT. When you import several tables of data at the same time, you need to check every table to make sure that the configuration of rows and columns is correct. In a situation like this, when all tables look the same, we've added a template functionality to make it easier to configure them all. You just need to configure the rows and columns in one of the tabs, and then you can copy that over to all of the other tabs that you have at the same time. You can also save the template for use in another project later. Once your data is inside Simca, the tables are called data sets. And in Simca 17, we've added some useful functionality in the data set properties. Here I'm using a spectroscopy project and I'm looking at a filtered data set. So if I right click properties, on the first page, I can see the variables. And as before, I can control the date time configuration if I have such variables. But I can also now control the variable type. So I can change from an X variable to a Y variable. If I do that, that will affect the default work set. If I go to the general tab, I can now change the name of the data set. I can also set my spectral ID here and I can change it if I like. I can also change the display name of my uh, spectral ID. And since this is a pre-processed or filtered data set, there's also a tab that summarizes all the settings that is used to create this data set so that you can recreate it later on. For the next data set functionality, which concerns merging of data tables, we need a new project. This is a batch project with one data set containing process data and one with at line measurements at a much lower frequency. And what we want to do is to merge all the at line data into the process data set based on the sample time point. Go to data tab merge side by side you got process data on the left at line data on the right you match exact on the batch id you add the timestamp uh, on the process and the sample time of the at line data you don't want the exact match we'll do a nearest match and now on the bottom now we can see that there is about an 87 percent match so that means 87 percent of the observations in the at line data will be matched into the and moved over to the process data. In Simca 16, all the remaining observations would have been deleted. Now in Simca 17, we've added the functionality to save all the non-matching observations in a new data set. Let's go back to the spectroscopy project we used earlier. When you have multiple PLS or OPLS models with the same Y variable, you get access to some model comparison functionality. This is a case where I have used the calibration wizard to make alternative prediction models for the same response. I've got two calibration sessions here. The comparison functionality can also be found in the model performance pane in the calibration wizard. And that is described in the calibration wizard video. First, the two plots 
Q-square and RMSE CV that previously only was available in the spectroscopy skin, but now automatically becomes available when you have models based on spectroscopy data. When you click on any of these buttons, you first select the models you want to compare. And I want to compare all the models from calibration session two, and they are already marked in this list. The Q-square plot show how the predictive ability increases with the model complexity for the selected models. The RMSC CV plot display the root mean square error for the cross-validated predictions for the selected models. And this is an estimate of the predictive ability in the same unit as the response variable. The lower the value, the better the prediction. The last button is called the compare models. And it creates a list of model performance for the selected models. The best value in each column is marked in green. This list shows the R-square, the Q-square, RMSEE and RMSECV, and a new value, the mean bias error, MBE, for the cross-validated predictions. Mean bias error is an average error of the predictions, but with a sign intact. This means that you get an indication of whether your model is over-predicting or under-predicting. This value should be close to zero. If we go to the predict tab, we find the corresponding functionality here. We've got RMSEP, and we've got a compare predictions list. If we look at the MBE values in the list, we see that model M10 is the best, and that M8, which is highlighted in the background, is actually worst with a high positive value. To visualize the bias, we create an observed versus predicted plot. This does not look at all that bad, but if we use another new functionality, it becomes easier to see. In the Tools tab and in the Add Plot element, we can now add the identity line, which makes it clear that this model is over-predicting most of the time. While we are on the subject of plot interactivity, let's have a look at a spectra plot. By default, the spectra are colored by the first y bar variable on a continuous scale. This can be changed in the properties pane, so we can switch to another y variable. The continuous coloring by a response variable is often used to see if there are any trends in a plot. Here it's a spectra plot, but it's often used in score scatter plots as well. When the distribution of values in the coloring variable is skewed, the continuous coloring sometimes appear not to use the full scale. To help in these situations, we have introduced what we call a ranked color option. This starts from the same coloring variable, but instead of coloring by value, the ranked option colors by the position or rank that the value has in a sorted list. This helps to utilize the full color scale and visualize trends better in the plots. For all plots, clicking on an axis brings up the axis appearance. And here we find two new additions. We've got reverse axis and we've got log transform. Now it's time to leave the spectroscopy data and have a look at some of the new functionality connected to batch data analysis. Here we have a batch project with one evolution data set to the right and one process output data set called batch conditions in Simca to the left. No model is created and if I click in the batch evolution data set, a new visualization possibility appears in the quick info pane, a batch control chart. The batch control chart in itself is nothing new, but it is new that you don't have to create a model to view your raw data in this way. A second improvement in the visualization of batch evolution data can be seen if we pop out the control chart. I double click on it and it pops out. The new functionality here is that we can color by batch conditions. You can switch over to the batch conditions data set and pick one of the final viability, for instance. 
Now let's have a look at something that relates to batch modeling and not just visualization. We initiate a new batch evolution model and we go to the variables page. And here we see that the Y variable is shifted and it says align by batch one. This is a new alignment functionality and it is now the default for short batches, less than 20 observation batches. For longer batches, a typical process manufacturing batch, the well-proven Simca alignment is still the default, but for daily data of a bioprocess, it has been requested by users to be able to fully control the alignment vector. And this is why we have introduced this option. You can change alignment batch or switch to the normal Simca alignment using the drop-down menu on the Y button. This video will end like it began with some information slides. First a note on the Python implementation in Simca 17. We've updated Python to version 3.7.9 and now some common packages are pre-installed in the default virtual environment. And these packages are NumPy, SciPy and Pandas. Of course, all new Simca 17 functionality has been added to the Python interface as well. But in addition, we have also added more control over Simca plots. As mentioned before and presented in detail in the pre-processing video, we've extended the pre-processing library to cover the, all the common spectral filters. We've also introduced the possibility to save the Simca project in a Simca 16 compatible way. However, the new filters are not possible to include in that format. So the list to the left are the only filters that can be saved in a Simca 16 format. All other models and model parameters can be saved in a Simca 16 project. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about our efforts to improve the performance and responsiveness of Simca. We know that our users are getting larger and larger data sets that they want to analyze in Simca. Improving performance is a never ending task involving identifying investigating and fixing many individual performance bottlenecks in the analysis workflow. In Simca 17, we have addressed several of these issues, especially around plotting and coloring of plots, but not limited to that. We've seen improvements of up to 99% in performance for individual bottlenecks, but it's difficult to give an overall improvement number for a software like Simca. One thing that all users will benefit from is the process of opening projects, which has been improved with around 67% compared to previous versions. And we're confident that you will find Simca 17 much faster and responsive than previous versions. This concludes the feature video on miscellaneous improvements in Simca 17. And I hope you find the new functionality useful and make sure to check out our other videos in our YouTube channel, Sartorius Data Analytics. Thanks for watching.